Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha aka Geek XX Chic, and I'm back with a review for The Flash. Now, right off the bat, full disclosure, I was on vacation for the last couple of weeks, so that is why there's been a lack of reactions up on the channel recently. I appreciate your patience. I know some of you have been reaching out like, where are these reactions? Why aren't they here? I wasn't here. So it wasn't anything like me slacking on the job. I just was not here. I literally was not at home. So. Uh, I know I am way behind on a couple of my favorite shows, namely The Flash, Black Lightning, um, Walking Dead. All of those have been airing since I left on vacation, so I am a few episodes behind those. But I am catching up as best as I can to get those reactions out to you as soon as I can and get right on course with the season as it's going right now. So this particular review is going to be for episodes two and three of The Flash because those were air those aired when I was gone. I did do the premiere a few weeks back, but I did not get a chance to do episodes two and three. So just because I have a lot to catch up on, I just decided not, I thought about recording back-to-back -back reactions, but it is already a couple weeks late and just it's a lot <laughs> to try to get all of those out and churn all that out. So I figured I'm just gonna do a combined reaction for episodes two and three of The Flash, and then I will definitely do episode four as that just aired this week. And with Black Lightning, I'm also going to be doing uh, a review of the first three episodes and then I'll kind of jump right back into that in its current weeks and then that way at least it's a little less pressure on me and I can also get out better content because like I said I could try to rush it all but it just doesn't come out as well and it's not as much fun for me and I want to do this because it's fun and hopefully you guys are enjoying it when I'm you know it's a fun experience all around so let's get into this particular review what I figured I would do since I'm reviewing two episodes at the same time is actually focus on the characters and kind of what they've been going through thus far and kind of where the show seems to have been laying the foundation for the season out in these first couple of episodes so let's start with the show the show star the namesake the flash Barry well <laughs> It's very interesting. I feel like so far this season, Barry has actually been at the, he has, he's been in the background of the season. He hasn't really been in the forefront of the storytelling and of the storyline so far, which isn't a terrible thing per se. I mean, it is his show. It is inevitably always going to be about and revolve around the Flash. And we already know, at least as far as we know so far, one of the main reasons that Nora's come back is because in the future the Flash disappears and she's trying to figure out how that happens or how to stop it. So of course that is all about Barry. But in the short scheme of things, in these past three episodes that I've viewed so far, Barry's very much kind of been taking a back seat, particularly to Nora and to Cisco, which is nice actually, and a little bit to Caitlin. So again, only the first couple of a few episodes here, so it's not a huge deal that Barry's not necessarily front and center. But the main things we've really seen with Barry is his interaction with or his reaction to his daughter. And I think a lot of what we've seen in episodes one, two, and three very much fall under what Barry said in episode one to Iris about how he feels like he's kind of being robbed of his moments of this experience that he'd been looking forward to as far as having children and raising them with Iris in the future now that Nora's here and she's a fully formed human and she's got opinions and thoughts and a whole bunch of things that he had really nothing to do with outside of, of course, the image that she had of Barry in her head. And even though we're seeing them work together, like CSI together uh, at CCPD or having her pop up at crime scenes and of course the two of them working together when trying to take down villains, it's all well and good, but you can see that they're still very much, at least I've personally picked up that Barry's kind of keeping Nora a little bit at arm's length still. She's, he's still kind of keeping a little bit of a buffer as far as letting her into his inner circle, as it were. And I do think that part of that, as I said, is because he does feel robbed, but I also don't think he fully trusts Nora. And Barry, <laughs> he's flawed, as we all know, but he does have a really good instinct when it comes to people. And I think there's a part of him that knows that Nora isn't coming 100% forward with everything that she's that she's holding as far as information and it's not just about the timeline stuff and I think deep down in his gut something's telling him not to kind of jump in headlong with this relationship where Nora's concerned now of course some of this could also be because he also understands that Nora has to go back at some point and so de you know developing this deep and crazy connection with her now I can see where he's like well why would I do that when she's you know ideally I'm gonna see her whatever 25 30 years from now anyways like maybe i should just leave that and leave some surprises but 
I think it's just kind of like Barry kind of knows something else is going on with Nora and he's kind of just treating her more like a colleague. And I noticed that like he's definitely been falling into that mentorship role again this season. And we've seen him do it before. We've seen him do it with Wally. We've seen him do it with uh, Ralph last season. It's not that he's at all unfamiliar with trying to train a young hero uh, to, to become what they're going to be. But I'm not seeing that intimacy or that willingness to embrace Nora the way that she's clearly trying to get him to do. Like even in their little hugs that they have and you know, Nora's always just like squishing the ever living life out of Barry. Barry's just kind of like giving her like this, okay, yeah, all right. And we see a lot more eye rolls, if anything, with Barry. Like we've seen a couple, few times where he's come to Iris and, and to uh, Joe and he's kind of more like, like, I love the kid, I do, but geez, like, I need a break. Like, she's all over me. And you can imagine, like, poor Nora, bless her heart, she is being very suffocating at the moment where Barry's concerned. And while in her head she's known Barry her whole life, it's completely normal for her to do this. Barry, you know what I mean? Like, he's used to kind of having his space and doing his own thing. So very interesting to see that dynamic so far. And it'll be interesting. I hope that the show kind of follows up on why Barry is kind of pulling back a bit with Nora and not throwing himself in as much as say Iris would if Nora was even remotely interested in developing that connection. And so maybe I'm, I'm wondering if there's going to be a point where we see Nora pick up on the fact that Barry's being a little bit standoffish and try to confront it, or if it's something that he's going to talk about with Iris. But I think it's going to have to come to a head at some point because he knows, and I'm glad that it's in uh, episode three in particular, Barry kind of acknowledged that, you know, he sees the fact that Nora is not making that effort with Iris and not really spending any time with Iris and Iris is being such a trooper about it. And I just can't see Barry being okay with that indefinitely because Iris is Barry's world. We know this. And so it's got to be bothering him to some extent that Nora is not even trying, not only just to give him the space mentally that he needs, but not even trying to be the mother. Like, you know, this woman, the love of his life, like why would she be kind of actively trying to ignore Iris? So that's kind of all I can really say about Barry right now. Cause as I said, oddly enough, he really has been playing second fiddle these fat past few episodes, as far as his thoughts, his feelings, even the speeches and moments, like we've actually seen Barry get his butt handed to him twice by Cicada, sorry, Cicada. I think that's the way they said it. The villain. He's already had his butt handed to him twice. And this is where <laughs> I kept getting flashbacks every time I saw the two of them fighting and Barry just getting walloped. That, that training back in season one, was it? When Oliver, no, maybe it was season two. Season two was the first season of a crossover, right? No, no, no. It was season one. Anyway. When Oliver came and he was trying to tra tra train Barry about like, yes, you've got your speed and that's amazing and that's great, but you don't know how to fight. Like actually combat is a different skill than being able to run really fast. And we saw that huge gap with Barry's training in these episodes because as soon as his speed was gone, I was like, Barry's about to get his butt whooped because he doesn't know how to fight. Really and truly, Barry's moves are based on having the speed force behind his punches and his kicks. He doesn't have that right now. So as a straight up fighter, Barry is still that skinny little kid from the lab. You know what I mean? So maybe, I know there's going to be crossover again this season. Maybe we'll have something leading up to, or maybe him and Oliver actually have a little bit more of that hand to hand combat training because Barry is definitely lacking and he's going to need to be able to do something because he's getting his butt handed to him right now. Now on to Nora while we're on that subject. So Nora is just a big old barrel of secrets. <laughs> Episode one, it was narrated by her. We definitely got a version of why she's here in the past and why she came here and why she's trying to figure out what's going on with Barry. But there's obviously more layers to her story that have been very much a mystery since the first episode and still seem to be growing. I particularly felt that in this past episode with her insistence on trying to make this uh, Hirsch, David Hirsch guy, the, the villain, like, yes, Iris gave a very wonderful and flowery explanation as to why she was so desperate for that, but I think it was more than that. Just her desperation at it all, the look on her face every time someone brings up the timeline. Like, there's just some more going on there, and I don't think it's just the guilt over the fact that she's changed the timeline. I just feel like there's something else going on, another factor that's a little bit darker, a little bit less cutesy, that Nora's very, trying very desperately to keep under wraps and is starting to feel that unravel. So... Anyway, uh, we definitely still have some gaps where Nora's concerned as to why she, like, who gave her the idea to come back in time? 
Like if she's so unskilled that she doesn't know how to supersonic punch and she doesn't know how to phase and she barely knows how to open up a speed portal, then how did she get there? You know what I mean? Like there's, how did she run up that building and stop that satellite or yeah, that broken satellite from coming down? So there's some holes in Nora's story and I'm sure as the season goes on, we're going to see those pieces get put together. But it definitely is a huge question mark for me as to what's been going on. Like what is... Nora's ultimate goal and it kind of feeds into something where I think that we may not like Nora may not be the forever child of Barry and Iris and this is kind of going into a bit of predictions but someone wrote it in the comments a few um a few, I think maybe in the premiere and I think they were right about it is that maybe Nora is not going to be the child that they have in the future because she's our she's already changing so much about what's going to happen in the future but I'm almost wondering if there's something going on where maybe Nora, I don't know. I don't know where to put it, but I just feel like in the end, something Nora does or says is going to end up in her kind of erasing herself out of existence. And then replacement will actually end up with the Tornado Twins. Because that whole line, which has not come to fruition yet, that Barry said last season about how we're going to need more diapers. I have no doubt that has to, I've said it since last season and I reiterate it now. I'm sure it has to do with Iris being pregnant. But at first I thought maybe it was just a reference to, okay, maybe it's that, you know, Iris is pregnant and Cecile and Joe's baby is still in diapers and that's what they mean. But I feel like Iris is going to get pregnant and she's going to have twins. You know she's gonna be pregnant with twins and so that's gonna negate the whole Nora thing and I think it's all gonna work in a way that's not gonna sound as morbid as I just described it but I have a feeling somehow Nora's gonna have to have to kind of write herself out of existence but anyway there's a lot of mysteries around her and I'm right now I have to say I'm just not down with the shade that she's throwing toward Iris because I in the first episode I said okay fine I get it you know Barry's the parent she never had I also theorized that maybe the fact that Iris losing Barry we saw how lost Barry was when in that future where Iris had died, like he was despondent, he'd stop being the Flash, like he just wasn't himself. Maybe it was another case, the same thing with Iris and that her losing Barry, she lost her internal compass, her true north, and she kind of became this sullen husk that tried to raise Nora. But it doesn't explain to me, like it, it seems like Nora's actually like angry with or resentful towards Iris. And that doesn't make sense to me. Especially since she doesn't have that kind of malice towards Joe or Cecile or anyone else in her family. And I get it's different, like that's her mother and if her mother really wasn't there for her emotionally, that would definitely create a level of resentment. But Joe is the biggest cheerleader of Iris there is. Like he loves his daughter to death. Plus she was raised by Joe and Joe is and, and Iris are both like the most empathetic people. Do you know what I mean? Like the, the level of, of warmth and care and empathy that those two have is one of their superpowers on this show. And so I just can't see how, even if Iris was despondent and sullen and all those other things, how she wouldn't, you know, how she would get to a place where Nora would be rolling her eyes behind her back and things like, you know what I mean? It just seems like, I don't know, there seems to be, a, there's something missing there anyways. And I really am curious to know what that gap is. And I think it feeds again into why this version of their child is not going to be in the future. But I would be interested to find out what it is that Nora feels that Iris has done to warrant this kind of almost latent hostility towards her. Like in the, in, in the episode two, when Iris came up with the idea of using the Doppler radar to find Block, and she was just like, as soon as her mom came up with it, she just kind of got this look on her face like she was pissed. And I was like, what is your problem? Like, she can't go, you know, it's not like she's actively trying to get in, insert herself. Do you know what I mean? Like, I understand if Iris was constantly trying to make Nora spend time with her, but she's been very good about giving Nora her space and trying to let her come to her, as we saw uh, Joe advise her to do. So where is it coming from? I really would be interested to know. But I'm hoping it doesn't continue because it really bothers me because Iris, my God, we already know... Iris gets so much flack on this show as it is, <laughs> as a character. I know the haters are probably reveling in the fact that Nora is not liking her, but she just, I mean, after the way the show completely, completely mishandled the storyline with her mother, I don't want this to be a, t a trend with Iris's family members. I don't want Barry and Joe to be the only cheerleaders in Iris's corner. It's not okay, in my opinion. She needs more people there for her, especially in her own family circle. So. 
hopefully whatever this is with Nora, we'll find out what it is and it's something that can be resolved. And if not, then, you know, like I said, she'll be erased out of existence. So who cares? On to Iris. There isn't, again, a lot going on with Iris right now, which sadly is the trend with this show typically. Uh, outside of the fact that I love seeing her getting back into the reporting, I really like that they're actually keeping this theme up so far with her doing the investigative journalism and having the blog continue because that's what Iris is supposed to be, a journalist. So I know that's not going to be front, like, in the forefront of the show the way that we might like, but at least we've got mentions of the blog. I loved seeing her go to the crime scene, asking Detective Singh questions, doing her own research. I want to see this. This is what I've said since season one, we could have had Iris doing, working in the background, working her own case, her own angles, but using that information actually in help Team Flash to do what they need to do as well. There's no reason why Be uh, Iris can't do both. And so I'm seeing a little bit of that right now and I hope the show continues with it throughout the season and doesn't drop it. But I am loving seeing that. I am loving how patient and loving Iris is being right now. Again, I mentioned it's gotta be killing her that Nora is actively avoiding her. And, you know, we've seen it several times. Nora will go out of her way to be physically affectionate and, and you know, kind to Barry and just completely stonewall Iris. And that's got to hurt, right? That's just no matter where you, whatever reasoning you might put behind it, it's got to hurt. So the fact that I, we haven't heard Iris give one complaint outside of, you know, she kind of, you know, whined a little bit to her dad. But in the grand scheme, like one comment to her father compared to what she could be doing is so amazing and it shows again why Iris is the rock of that family like she's so she's so giving that right now she'd rather let Nora do what she needs to do and allow Barry and her to develop their relationship even though she so desperately wants that there isn't much else to say about Iris that's really where her focal point has been uh this worry about this connection that her and I and Nora are not creating and of course just kind of Again, somewhat also, I, I mean, I think, I feel like later in the season, we're going to hopefully see her be a little bit more worried about this article and the fact that he has never come back in the future. But for now, she's definitely much more focused on this relationship with Nora and that's okay in the grand scheme of everything else that's going on. That kind of brings me to the logical thing of Cisco. So the sad reality when it comes to Cisco's character in this show is that he's always been put on a back burner. The most we've ever gotten about Cisco's backstories had to do with when those episodes where we saw his brother, who they then wrote out of the show, and then, of course, last season, his whole relationship with Gypsy, which I really liked because it was great to see Cisco have somebody who was all about Cisco and loved him even for his nerdiness and all the other things that make him Cisco. Since we can't have nice things, that ended. I don't blame it though. Like, I mean, for that actress, this was not a great gig. She was barely ever on the show, so I didn't really expect her to become like a regular recurring. It wouldn't have been worth it for her, to be honest. But digressing, that's kind of all we're getting with Cisco now. It's like the show is like, okay, we gave Cisco a relationship, so let's just milk that <laughs> to death. And I just kind of. Like, I don't want to complain too much about it because I'm glad that they haven't just had Cisco completely forget about the fact that he was in a relationship last season. But it feels a bit weird because we saw so little of his and, him and Gypsy's relationship last season that his feeling it this long seemed a little bit weird. Although I love that in this past, in episode three, they explained the fact that the vibes that him and, because I remember, they did mention in season three, or four, pardon me, that Cisco and Gypsy were actually on the same wavelength as far as their vibes. So the fact that he's still, every time he uses his vibe, it inadvertently talks directly to her, that makes so much more sense as to why he's holding on to this so much longer. In this particular case, like he can't even see her, yet this connection that they have on a much deeper level, potentially, is one that's continuing to keep this bond he's trying to forget very much alive. But I kind of want to see them do a little bit more with Cisco as far as him trying to develop his powers, him trying to figure out a kind of a purpose outside of just being the tech guy and the backup for Flash. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I would just love to see more, delve more into more of Cisco's past, his passions. Like, where does he want to go? Like, I can't believe that all he wants is to just continue to be the comic relief of the team. And I just feel like the show itself is just missing us a massive opportunity with having such a talented actor like Carlos Valdez on their staff and not using that amazing talent for more than just a few jokes here and there. Anyways, my hope is that throughout this season, we can actually find a, a true storyline for Cisco. One that I hope actually works on him expanding his powers. 
I mean, nothing is frustrating me more than the fact that we saw Cisco see his doppelganger in Earth 2 being reverb and seeing how powerful reverb was. And it's just like the, the show just kind of dropped the idea that Cisco could be so much more powerful than what we've seen. And I want to see him move to the next level as powers. We've seen the Flash do this through from seasons one. Well, I should say, I mean, we've seen some things improve. Sometimes the show likes to forget that Barry has speed, but digressing, we've seen his powers grow. We've seen Killer Frost suddenly learn how to do things like make icicle slides and, you know, fly on her on her icy, on her icy highway and all these other things that kind of show next level development. We haven't seen that with Vibe. And I just feel like it's just a huge gap the show needs to really address, which I'm hoping will be done this season. And now that we have yet another Wells, I don't want to see him fall into just, again, having to be the other half of a comedy duo. Caitlin, guys, I really want to say that I give a crap about her storyline, but I don't. Like, I just, I really am not all that motivated or moved by this whole thing of her father still being alive. I don't see the point of it. I don't see why it matters. I mean, it's great, again, that she's got something to do that doesn't have to do with a love interest. Like, this is probably the first season where we're not seeing her chase a guy and have that be, like, the massive portion of her storyline. But, I don't know, maybe a couple more episodes in, I'll feel more of an interest to know where this is going. But as it stands, I don't really care. Uh, but I, like I said, I am happy that she's got something to do, and I just want something like this for Cisco as well, to have something that's kind of outside of the Team Flash stuff and outside of the meta stuff and more about their actual personal development as characters. So that's kind of all I feel about it. Obviously, we don't see her much caring about anything else on Team Flash outside of, of course, helping Cisco with his broken heart. But it's... Yeah, it's kind of neither here nor there for me, and we'll see throughout the season if it has anything to do with tying into this bigger storyline or not, but if, even if it's just a side quest, I'm cool with that. I'm kind of going to lump Joe and Cecile into the same bucket because they don't have a lot going on so far this season, yet I am so happy that Cecile is losing her powers. I'm sorry, I know it's not what I mean, but I was actually a little disappointed to see that she still had them in the premiere. I was like, no! And it's not anything against Cecile, because I love her character. But I feel like we're at a good place of not having... We don't need any more metas within Team Flash. And I conclude Cecile and Joe's part of that, because they are part of the Flash family. We don't need any more. We are at the we are at the limit. Like, we need a few humans in this group. And I really like the idea of her being human right along with Joe. I do have a theory, though, that, that the baby... Little, um... I forgot her name already. But... <laughs> I have a feeling that she is the actual meta and that Cecile thinks she's the meta, but those, I feel like her powers are being channeled through her mother while she was pregnant and now that she's out, that's why Cecile's losing that ability, but she'll probably still be able to communicate at least with the baby when the baby so chooses to use those powers. But, but other than that, there wasn't much to say on that front. Those two have been pretty chill outside of that cute little moment about how Cecile feels like this whole starting over as a parent thing is really kicking her in the butt, but I'm kind of glad that she's got Joe, who's such a great father figure and such a great mentor overall that she feels like, okay, I can handle this because I got a good man by my side helping me through it. So all we need now is for Cecile and Joe to get married. I'm just saying so they can be together forever and ever, ever. Not much to say on Ralph. Again, um, I feel like we focused entirely too much on him in last season, so I'm actually perfectly fine with him kind of being in the background at the moment. It's sad because I feel like he definitely has the capacity to fall into where Wally felt, uh, Wally fell, pardon me, in the previous seasons of just kind of not really being around outside of a, you know, a plot device, but there's really not much to say about him. Like, we kind of delved a lot into Ralph's story last season. We don't really need too much more of that, so I'm okay with it being light on the Ralph stuff and hopefully they will not push him into a relationship with Caitlyn. The show has a bad tendency of putting her with any single dude that's on the show that's not Cisco. so hopefully that's not going to be where we're going, but there really isn't much to say about Ralph at this point, so I don't know how I feel about Sherlock Wells at this point. I actually rolled my eyes when I saw the Wells reincarnations again. Again, I love Tom Cavanaugh. I adore him. I adore him. And I love that he's having so much fun with these roles, but I feel like the first time around with them was enough. I feel like maybe they're milking it just a little bit at this point. So I'm kind of hoping we don't have to keep seeing this. Like, I almost feel like we should just stuck with Earth 2 Harry and just have him come in and out as necessary when they need that extra brain power. But I don't know. I don't know. 
I, like I said, the jury's out on Sherlock, whether or not I'm going to enjoy seeing him with this terrible French Canadian accent, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I mean, I love Tom Cavanaugh, and as long as he's helping t Team Flash in some way, that'd be great. And now for the baddie of the season. I think it's Cicada, if, time, if, if memory serves. I really apologize if that's not the case, but that's what I remember at the moment. So Cicada, I don't know yet. We got very little in these first three episodes. He was actually at the tail end of most of these episodes. Episode three is the most we've seen of him since the premiere, but we see that uh, the guy from American Pie is playing him, and <laughs> I'm sorry, I just can't get that out of my mind. But he's a father, and he's got a daughter who's quite sick, it looks like, it looks like she might be in a coma. My extrapolation is that she was potentially put there by a meta. Maybe that is why Cicada is so against metas, but I'm starting to wonder if he actually is a meta himself, or if that little lightning bolt that he uses is actually what's doing all the work. I don't know yet. I don't know much about his character. I have not looked him up yet, but any information you can give about him below, that'd be great. But we got a lot of information about him in episode three, including the fact that he was one of the arch villains that Team Flash never actually managed to bag in the future. They never figured out what it was to stop him. And from Sherlock, we also learned that he was one person, apparently, in all the other iterations of Earth that he'd encountered until now. And that, of course, is because of Nora changing the timeline. Now this particular Cicada he is a different person and potentially has had a completely different story. But we heard Cicada say to the Flash that all this time you've been te protecting metas rather than ending them. So very interesting line. Uh, to me, it sounds like he clearly blames metas for all the ills of the world potentially. And this is why he feels like he needs to kill them. I don't know if he needs to kill them all. Just kill the ones in Central City. I don't know yet. <laughs> But he clearly has something against metas. They are his primary target, but he does have a soft spot for families, it seems. So there is conscience in this particular meta, unlike uh, DeVoe, who is a bit of a sociopath. So we'll have to see how it goes throughout the season if we figure out who he is, how it's all going to uh, tie in, and if he really is going to be the big bad. And the reason I say he may not actually end up being the big bad of the season is because we had at the end of season, or episode three... Sherlock asking Excess about whether or not she came up with the idea to intercept her father and make herself known to the Flash at the time that, you know, the meteor, if that was her idea or if she was potentially told by somebody to do it at that point or to intervene the way she has. So that was an interesting idea I never thought about, the fact that Nora didn't act completely of her own volition. And if it wasn't of hers, who? And who's watching Star Labs as well? Sorry, that just made me remind, reminded me of Caitlin reading that letter, the cipher that her father left for her, which, by the way, I figured out right away by looking at it, like, this is a cipher, but digressing. Someone was watching her read that letter. Who? Who? Who's still got a camera in Star Labs? How have they not swept that place top to bottom for bugs since DeVoe? But I digress. I wonder if maybe whoever sent Lil Miss Nora is actually the issue, or maybe, biggest plot twist potentially, maybe Nora isn't a good guy. Like, maybe, just maybe, Nora's actually a villain. I mean, how cool would that kind of be if this incarnation of Barry and Iris' child is actually not a good guy? And maybe she's there for some other less than pure intentions. What? I don't know. Maybe reverse Flash Center. We don't know. I personally like the idea that maybe she's not so innocent. Maybe she was sent here to do something else. Maybe to ensure that there's no way that her father ever changes that timeline. Or maybe she made up that article and she's just trying to make sure it comes true. So many possibilities so early, but there's just something about Nora that's just a little off and I don't know what it is yet and I'm hoping it's not bad, but if it turns out she's a villain, it would definitely make her being erased out of existence a lot more palatable than all the alternatives. So time will tell. But overall, I have to say the season's still shaping up quite nicely. I do like, once again, that the Team Flash is being presented at the moment with a villain that they can't simply defeat with using speed and their powers. It forces them to be much more creative and use other skills that they have, like Barry being super smart, for example, and Iris's detective skills. So yeah, it's very interesting. The show's decision to take out the idea of this all-helping, all-knowing satellite last season, it's definitely pulling the team back to basics as far as some of the other skills they have, and I actually enjoy seeing that since we kind of dropped it all off after season one. So that's basically my thoughts on the first 
or sorry, on the episodes two and three of The Flash, as I said. So sorry about the reactions. I am getting back on track. I am going to be doing a reaction and review for episode four as soon as I can. But I want to get this out just to let you guys know I haven't forgotten and that I am definitely enjoying the season so far. So if you guys have any comments or anything you want to let me know about these characters or anything I might have missed, please leave that below. You know I love reading your comments and getting involved in that conversation with you guys. And if you like this video guys, please click like and if you want to see more from this geeky face, please click subscribe. Until next time, see ya!